Hello and welcome to Property Profits Real Estate Business Building, where we help you grow a real estate business, not just a portfolio. My name is Gord Lemon and I've been involved in Canadian and U.S. real estate for over 26 years. I've also helped many people build their real estate businesses as a real estate entrepreneur coach and speaker, and I'm also a published author with many real estate articles. As this video has some information which may be content and time sensitive, it's important that you pause the video and read this disclaimer prior to moving on. As real estate entrepreneurs, we must deal with the financing aspect of the business on an ongoing basis. Certainly, we have to have our own finances in order in terms of our financing binder, but we also need to understand mortgage terms and the options available to us in terms of what mortgage may suit us best in the long run and depending on what type of exit strategy we're actually going to use on a particular property. That said, in the next few videos, we'll discuss some mortgage terms and basic calculations to get you more familiar with the financing processes when it comes to acquiring income properties. Your expertise in this area will also be utilized when assisting any joint venture partner through the process. The first term you need to become familiar with is loan to value. This refers to the amount of loan or mortgage compared to the value of the property. So if a property was appraised at say 100,000 and the loan to value was 75%, the loan would be for $75,000. So if a lender offers you say 65% loan to value mortgage on a $400,000 purchase, the loan amount will be 260,000. So this means you must come up with a 35% down payment or $140,000. LTV, loan to value, will be a common term used as we move forward. Let's begin with down payments. As a homeowner in today's lending environment, for an owner-occupied property, so one that you live in, you can put down as little as 5% down. Now this is 5% of the purchase price of the property, and this must come from cash that you have in the bank or from an RSP or TFSA, and there are definitely rules and regulations surrounding that can also come from other liquid investments should you choose to go that route. Lenders like to see a clear paper trail and like it best when the money sat in your bank account for at least 90 days. You may also borrow the cash from a line of credit. However, lenders need to know that you can service both the new payment that you'll have on your line of credit as well as your new mortgage payment. The down payment can come from a relative such as a gift should you have really nice relatives. This is usually relegated to close relatives such as parents or grandparents or even uncles or aunts, but third cousin twice removed will not cut it. A gift letter must be signed by the giftee stating that the money is definitely a gift and doesn't need to be paid back. You just may have to cut the grass or shovel the driveway for the next 10 years. The mortgage you get as a borrower worth 5% down is considered a high ratio mortgage. So what does that mean? The mortgage you get as a borrower with 5% down is considered high ratio and is insured by either CMHC, which is Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, Genworth Financial, or Canada Guarantee. These companies have loan insurance programs which charge you a percentage of the mortgage amount depending on the loan to value. And this typically gets added to the overall mortgage balance even though you can pay it in full at the time of closing. If you put it on your mortgage, you're actually charged obviously additional interest as it increases the mortgage amount. This insurance is in place so that if you default on your mortgage, the lender actually gets what's owed to them from this pool of insurance premiums, which are paid by thousands of borrowers just like you all across the country who are in the same boat. These mortgages will typically have the lowest rates and are given to borrowers who meet the lender's standards of qualification. As real estate entrepreneurs, we are building our businesses and our portfolios by acquiring non-owner occupied properties. Properties which will serve as long-term holds, i.e. rental properties, rent to owns, those will require a down payment of at least 20% down and in a lot of cases these days, 25% down. And these are known as conventional mortgages. This does not trigger any insurance premium as the high ratio loans do. However, some lenders have their own internal insurance program and may charge a small premium even on a conventional mortgage, no matter what the loan to value is. These mortgages, if given by the A lending community of banks and banking affiliates, will typically have the lowest rates and are given to borrowers who meet the lender's standards of qualification. So it may be necessary in some cases to require a second mortgage. This means if the lender giving the first mortgage doesn't offer enough of a first mortgage to allow you to acquire the deal, and say perhaps you have 25% down and the first mortgage lender will only lend 65% loan to value, 
This will leave you 10% loan to value short. This means you require 10% loan from another lender. And this is fine because there's plenty of lenders who supply money for just this purpose. The first place you should look is to the person that you're actually purchasing the property from. This is known as a vendor take back mortgage or a VTB. Perhaps that investor or person will write you a mortgage for 10%. This actually helps them because they're not incurring the full tax implication from the sale of an investment property and are able to defer that extra tax until down the road when they fully realize that money. As well, they may make some interest on the money at the same time. They may even allow you to make no payments throughout the entire term of the mortgage and take the principal and interest as a balloon payment at the term's end. The second place to look for a second mortgage is from a lender who has a B lending program. Now this can come from banks or trust companies or credit unions. Often these type of lenders will entertain second position mortgages. Of course every lender and their programs are different and often in a state of flux depending on the lending environment. And of course every deal is different so there's always variables. The rates for these mortgages will be a little higher than from your lending institutions that are providing first mortgages so just be aware of that. And lastly, you can find secondary financing through private lenders. These lenders can be individuals, estates, or mortgage investment corporations, also known as MIX. These lenders look not just at you as a borrower, but also to the deal itself, particularly looking at the equity position or percentage of ownership of the property you possess as part of their risk assessment. So basically, if you default and they foreclose on you, they capture a lot of property value and they typically charge higher rates as well as fees in most cases. That's all the time we have for now. Check for part two of Mortgage Basics on this channel or go to www.canadianrejvclub.com or propertyprofits.ca for more tips and strategies. Take care and bye for now.